Hello and welcome to another edition of the Ag Plus Bio Plus Science podcast, where we examine uh, the convergence, uh, really, of food, science, and technology and the dramatic impact uh, those areas are having on the state of Indiana. Our guest for this edition of the podcast, pleased to have Jay Holbert. Jay is the president and CEO of Ag Alumni Seed. It's the world's leading breeder, producer, and marketer of hybrid popcorn seed. And Indiana, as maybe a few of you know out there, is the number one popcorn state in the entire country. And uh, Jay, welcome uh, to the podcast. Thanks very much, Gary. I'm really glad to be here. Uh, okay. First of all, I want to get to your background, but but also Ag Alumni Seed. There's a Purdue connection here. Give us the thumbnail description of Ag Alumni Seed. Uh, Purdue... Uh, uh Ag Alumni Seed is Indiana's foundation seed company, um, founded in 1938 uh, and has evolved into a specialty seed company uh, marketing hybrid popcorn seed. Uh, We licensed uh, Purdue's hybrid popcorn germplasm in 1995 when they shut the program down, and we've been off to the races ever since. And you're located in Romney? We're located in Romney, Indiana, just south of West Lafayette. Uh, farm about 3,000 acres there and uh, grow popcorn seed and uh, soybeans for rotation. And then we have a partner in Argentina for Southern Hemisphere production. Talk about your, your customer base because you sell, you have customers, clients uh, in many different places. We have clients uh, all over the Corn Belt. Of course, Indiana being the, uh, the largest popcorn state is very important, uh, but we sell to customers all over the world, uh, South America, Europe, South Africa, and Asia. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about uh, you, Jay Holbert, uh, again, CEO of Ag Alumni Seed. But uh, when did you arrive in uh, Indiana? Ri- arrived in uh, November of 2012. Okay, 2012. You're a West Coast guy, right? I, uh, I am. Portland, the, the several places on the West Coast. Talk, yeah. about, talk about your background. Grew up on a farm in Washington State, growing specialty crops, pretty much everything except uh, corn and <laughs> soybeans. Uh Worked in the vegetable seed industry in California uh, for about 15 years and then in ornamental horticulture in Oregon uh, for 11 years and then uh, here to Indiana. And, uh, you know, if you spend enough time in the seed industry, you have to come to the Midwest. It's mm-hmm. it's part of the deal. <laughs> so uh, we've been here for going on six years and really happy to be in Indiana. Um, it's a it's a great place to work in agriculture, uh, mm-hmm. particularly compared to the West Coast states. Yeah, I was going to ask you uh, about the comparison between the ag landscape, if you will, here in the Midwest and Indiana versus the the West Coast. In, in the West Coast, um, the the emphasis uh, in at the state level is on high technology, right? Everybody mm-hmm. everybody wants the next uh, Google, the next Facebook, the next mm-hmm. Microsoft. And ag is, at best, a second-class citizen. Um, doesn't get a lot of respect. And one of the really neat things about working in Indiana is uh, being able to observe and, and be part of the business and university and state uh, partnership to promote the ag biosciences. Mm-hmm. Well, talk about that, because Ag Alumni Seed was really one of the founding members of Agrinovus. Um, what was the thought process for the company to really get behind the effort? And how would you assess, because as I look, uh, kind of the 50,000 foot view, Agrinovus uh, has really is, continues to gain traction all over the state of Indiana in supporting, encouraging ag and, and ag development. Well, part of our mission, we are a not-for-profit, mm-hmm. and part of our mission is supporting uh, farmers uh, and supporting Purdue University. And we've done that traditionally with genetics. Uh, with, with Purdue, we've sent uh, uh, slightly more than $2.7 million over the last five years back to Purdue to support ag research. Um, so Agrinovus is really just an extension of that mission. Um, it, it's a way to support agriculture uh, in Indiana, to support the ag biosciences, and it was just a natural fit for us. As you look at, at, at your business uh, and, and the seed business, the popcorn, uh, seed popcorn business, uh, what's your assessment? How, how are things right now in the, in the business? The popcorn business is good right now. Um, you know, it, it's it's. It's a specialty crop, so it's it's very different from the corn and soybean business. Um, it tends to be more stable. Um, we don't have huge uh, uh, 
price fluctuations. You know, what you pay at the movie theater mm -hmm. or at the supermarket for popcorn doesn't move up and down very much. So it's a little bit more stable for the popcorn companies and for growers. Uh, for the farming community, it provides an alternative crop um, with, with maybe a little bit better margins than, uh, than dent corn. Um, it's a very global uh, crop. Uh, popcorn is something that makes a great snack. Uh, it's inexpensive, and you can add whatever flavor to it fits a local culture. So popcorn grown in Indiana gets exported to Mexico. They pop it. They put some chili uh, powder on it, maybe a squeeze of lime juice, and it's a Mexican snack. Uh, in Brazil, one of the popular microwave popcorn flavors is mustard. Wow. Which sounds odd, <laughs> but does. on a hot day in Brazil with a cold beer, it, uh -huh, it's go. not bad. Yeah. It's not bad. Very good. Uh, and, and that makes it really a global uh, snack food. Um, given that and the dynamics, what, what uh, do you need uh, to continue to grow uh, going forward in the company? What are some of the, the, uh, the key factors that can, enab can enable uh, the company, the organization to grow? Well, it's, it's uh, uh, implementation of technology. Uh, plant breeding, uh, particularly in small companies, has been very, a very traditional uh, art and science of a plant breeder uh, walking through his nursery and selecting the plants that he thinks are going to make the best hybrids. Um, genomics, uh, genomic technology is really driven uh, uh, very much by computer processing power. Um, and as that has, as the power has increased, as Moore, Moore's law has, has driven down the cost of that, we're able to use uh, a lot of that technology now to support um, our breeding efforts. And I, I, I should say popcorn is non-GMO. Um, mm. it's, a, it's a globally traded commodity. Europe is an important market. Mm -hmm. um, GMO popcorn in Germany would not be a, a, a hit. <laughs> um, but we can use the tools that were developed to support uh, uh, genetic modification to improve our breeding of popcorn. And um, we're now working on implementing, implementing that technology. Very good. Um, I believe you were on the trade mission, Agrinova's Governor Holcomb, uh, to Israel. Yes. Uh, talk about that, because I know there are a lot of people who came back, uh, you know, Israel known as startup nation, uh, if you will. Uh, a lot of focus on the ag biosciences there. What was your, a couple of your big takeaways from that trip? I, I had worked in Israel a fair amount in the late 90s with some Israeli seed companies, and, and uh, I, they are very focused. The Israeli business community is nothing if not focused. Um, and uh, they view that as part of their mission to help the state of Israel survive. Uh, they also, uh, because of they're short of land, they're short of water, they're all about high value agriculture. Um, high value tomatoes, peppers, uh, melons that they can export to Europe, strawberries. And that means they have a little bit more money per acre in income compared to commodity agriculture in the Midwest. And they have used uh, that money to develop a lot of new technologies. Uh, drip irrigation, of course, came out of Israel. Um, and I, I think by working with Israeli startups, we can uh, take some of those technologies and bring them to the Midwest and apply them on, on our broader acres a little bit lower value per acre crops uh, to improve uh, uh, American ag production as well. Great. So you see technology uh, transfer. There are other opportunities, do you think, for, for collaboration uh, with Israel? Tons of opportunities for collaboration, yes. Their research institutes are, are much smaller than, uh, than U.S. institutes, uh, but they are very focused on commercialization. And uh, I, I think there's, a, there's an opportunity there for uh, collaboration, both at the university level and the commercial level. Fascinating information. Jay Holbert is the president and CEO of Ag Alumni Seed. It's the world's leading breeder, producer, and marketer of hybrid popcorn seed based in Romney, Indiana, not far from Purdue University. And Jay, uh, thanks for being with us on this edition of the podcast. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Well, that's uh, all of the time we have for this edition of the Ag Plus Bio Plus Science podcast, uh, looking at the uh, convergence of food science and technology here in Indiana. I'm Gary Dick. We'll see you next time. This podcast is a product of Inside Indiana Business, hosted by Gary Dick. 
produced by Libby Fritz and Joe Ullery and was recorded on location at Launch Fishers. More people get Indiana Business News from inside Indiana Business than any other source.